<laughs> Down in Manchester, we got about 10 people moving a week. It's getting pretty crazy. Good afternoon. So, what's your name? So it is Sunday afternoon, probably about 3.30. There's a gentleman here, he's got a video camera. Was he talking to you earlier? No. This is cute, we got a fan. Welcome to the neighborhood, do you live here? Are you visiting from somewhere else? It's okay with me. It is a little strange, but whatever. But rather have a conversation. Exactly. Is there something that you're upset about? How long have you been out here? Like a minute or two. Are you like making some sort of point? I don't get it. <laughs> so, um, I'll probably insert some of it. Can you explain the joke? Maybe you get another oh. camera, I'll be right back. <laughs> I don't know if it's a joke, he looks pretty serious. That'd be pretty serious to come out here. <laughs> Have a, uh, a protest or a video recording or whatever this is. Oh, there she is. There's, uh, I think that's Boston's wife, Jennifer. Uh, <laughs> Hi there. Why don't you come over here and tell me to get a job? <laughs> well, that's not her. She doesn't say that. That's just, that's her, hus that's I her thought husband. That, isn't that, that, no, that looks like Boston. Oh, is he over there too? I think that's Boston. Oh, yeah, that's him out there. Yeah. I don't see him standing there either. What, what? The individual? Hello. <laughs> I personally would it's like to see Brandy. mostly in fighting. Quite honestly. Brandy or Andrea? At the end of the day, he is It's good. It's like from Mix, but... Oh, yeah. What is it? Lemonade? Uh, lemonade is too acidic for me. I don't know why. I just don't like it. Just, just lemonade. Is this your letter? Yes, it is. Thank you. Know, standing out here for some period of time. Might like a beverage, but it doesn't seem to be responsive. Where is I don't know why. I mean, I, I want what, what I really don't understand is the, the whole silent protest thing. I mean, why, why not have a conversation? Obviously, cool. there's some, some concern. You know, there's some sort of... Uh, some sort of issue, something that has motivated this gentleman to, to come out here. Oh, it would be nice to know what that is and see if there's anything that, that could address that. Silent processing has been very effective for Dave Ridley, but he usually had some sort of paperwork to go along with. He usually it. would have a sign or some sort of handout, yeah. right, that would explain what his, his concerns were. And he usually had a concern. I mean... My, my guess would be that he's not entirely sure what his concerns are. Um, you know, there's a lot of, like, speculation. inadvertently wind up entertaining us for hours and just so you know you've been at this for like six minutes just saying oh is that seriously where's where's Andrea and Brandy I want to ask them some questions good afternoon Would you like some? So do you want to have a conversation?
Maybe explain what your motivation is? Any concerns you have? I find there's a lot of misinformation out there about uh, the activist community here in Keene. Some outright lies. So I could understand why some people are understandably upset. A lot of people have been lied to. Then again, I bet Andrea nor Brandy would answer me. <laughs> well, and Andrea talks to me. Well, if she were going to come here and do this, I don't oh, think she would Oh, I guess if it was supposed me. to be a silent protest or something. Yeah. And, yeah I would like to know why they feel it's okay to demean you. Your activism is ahead of its time. Only just now is the general but public starting to be concerned no, okay. about the police becoming I'm militarized. Like, yeah. Yeah, that's true. So, it could be just... Okay. How do you feel about police militarization? El Paso. I mean... Oh, it's... And the police showed up in riot gear before the protest started. Yeah. Really, we'll start to look strange. Better hope our grumpy neighbor don't call cops. They don't like protesters. Hey guys, we've got a visitor. A silent visitor. No. Do you think that this was like supposed to be a thing, like a bunch of people were supposed to come and like... Oh, I didn't have any expectation about anything. I mean, I don't know. I didn't really know. This sucks, though. I definitely wouldn't want oh, yeah. this guy right now. Well, I mean, I... I this is all well and good. I think he's dedicated, sucks. personally. I mean, I think that it takes a lot of dedication to come out alone somewhere and, yeah, versus you know, like stand up sucks, to people. Man. That sucks, I think that's pretty brave, personally. I wouldn't. Just saying. A lot of times, I mean, we've done, you know, I think the funny thing is it's um, some of the, the Stop Free Keen folks who might have supported this idea or sort of ultimately supporting the, an idea that they probably would have been upset about had we done it, right? Like, had we gone to <laughs> yeah. uh, Eli Rivera's house that we have in the past, some activists have gone there, and uh, Judge Burke's house as well. Fenton Moore, when he knocked Derek off his bicycle right over there. Yeah. Uh, we went over to Fenton Moore's house after that, so, I mean, I congratulate you. This is, uh, it's good activism, but generally you'd want to communicate, I would think, at least, if not with us, with the neighbors, you know, to let them know why you're here. Check yeah, this. I mean, generally, if you have, you know, something that you're trying visitors. to accomplish, you know, communicating yeah. it. Yeah. We would have signs or things like things like that out in front of uh, Judge Burke's house. I have, um, I have like blank poster board inside and like markers and stuff. That's a good idea. Want. Maybe I'll get it for. Would you like some chalk too? I know you guys might have been talking about doing some chalking. Could hook you up. Do you know if there's any chalk inside? Maybe the, he'd like some some chalk to use. There's some on the porch. Is there some on the porch? Yeah, it's underneath that uh, desk type thing. So I think it's a TV stand. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, help yourself, man. If you feel if you feel so inspired, maybe that would be a good way to get your message out without having to to speak it. Not fun. Well, you can sit down. It's fine. How you doing, man? Hey, man. I don't know. I, we, we might Tony. have met. That's Tony. Um, like I kind of, I was on the forums, mm -hmm. uh, like a couple weeks ago, and I passed through here, and I came here kind of late, so met cool. up with some people in and you Manchester. Are? Tony. Tony and Tony. Yeah. Is it spelled differently? Yes. With an I. Yes. And, and I a, y. a Y. Okay. He's Anthony, and I'm Antonia. Okay. Cool. <laughs> cool. And where y'all from? Uh, I'm from California originally, uh -huh. but I'm living in Manchester now. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. Very cool. So, like, now as in, like, this weekend you've moved, or, like, uh, a week I ago? Or? Well, I went to Pork Fest, and then I came down to visit, mm -hmm. and I wanted to stay. So I went back to California, said goodbye to, like, family and friends, and then brought my car out here. Um, That's exciting. So, yeah, I've been back for, like... Maybe a month now. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I love it, dude. That's awesome. Very cool. Yeah, I'm glad. The Manchester seems to be quite a destination. You guys don't have the counter protesters yet, though. 
Mm. I mean, like this guy. Oh yeah. It's for me. It's because uh, I'm kind of a country person, but I also enjoy the city. So mm -hmm. Manchester is like a good size place for yeah. me. Yeah. Like, I can drive hey, dude. ten minutes. Hey, We've got a visitor. Oh, what's going on, everybody? He uh, he doesn't want to speak, but I've got I brought him some chalk. Man, I got some chalk for him, so in case he wants to express himself, he can do that. I brought some chocolate out if anyone wants some. Great idea. Well, I'm a little bit parched. You sure I can't bring you some water? Anything like that? Useful stuff. Thanks, Jack. Yeah, no Thank you. You know, chocolate helps with happiness. Everybody knows <laughs> this. Sarah told me that was enough. I think the stop, some of the stop free keen definitely need some chocolate then. Oh, I think so too. Because like a battery pack. Because the thing about camera phones is they in your recording, especially if you're live streaming, the batteries will run down really fast. I'm at a new video, I'm on. And you don't want to run out of like, the top part video recording. Like, oh. That's important because it's like, it's, it's, it always so happens good. that as soon as your camera dies, that you that's mean, when something like, interesting like, happens. I hate you it. You just came out and I was like, she is the one. Speaking of camera phones. Also, a thing you might want to no, consider is, just excuse me, can I have through here? Oftentimes, the software you're using when recording crashes, sometimes the plain old camcorder works out a lot better. If you get some walkie-talkies, then you can get your friends to come too, which is huge. We have a thing also, we have like the group text messaging thing, we call it Keen 411. It's actually pretty easy to set up. I think you have instructions on how to do that on Free Keen, right? Yeah, on the uh, Shire Society forums. Yeah. Well, he's got a couple friends down the street, but I guess they didn't want to come down today. Down the street? Yeah. Maybe he didn't want to be yelling at us like he normally does when he drives by, you know, disturbing the yeah, peace I hear of the that, neighborhood. Yeah, you know, pretty frequently that these guys, they drive by the house and yell yeah. noise in the neighborhood. It's not, it's not very neighborly. Um, well, they're frat boys or, you know, adults who behave like, like frat boys, you know, whoever it is. Which reminds me, isn't Hercules the cutest thing you've ever seen? You think it's gonna be like this huge dog, but it's not this huge dog, it's like this really freaking cute one. And then they all help pull the fence off of them. That's how we should treat our brethren. Pull the fence off. I'm gonna start doing that. Hey, how are This is Chris Thayer. Um, so you used to live in Keene? You don't live here anymore? You're visiting? I mean, I, I appreciate visitors. I think it's kind of a funny behavior that you're engaging in, though. I mean, where do people come from who silently uh, go to people's houses and just hang out outside? I mean, it's, it's very Eastern, I guess. But... I'm more, I'm more in touch with uh, communication and expressing ideas. Um, I think that's a more quicker way to forward a dialectic, to, uh, you know, forward ideas and, uh, you know, the, the engine of one's mind, so to speak. Whereas silence is more of a, uh, an exclusive activity. It's trying to isolate the individual from the audience. Um, unless it's meditative or something, I suppose. If it's meditative, then then maybe like, uh, you know, people can connect in that way. But, um, you seemed, from some of the posts I read on Stop Free Keen, if you are Chris, you seemed upset at the direction in which a town that you no longer live in uh, has headed. And I was wondering if there were some larger issues beyond your issues with Free Keen that may influence that sort of belief if I was to interpret your feelings correctly. And uh, if, if I'm interpreting them incorrectly, please correct me. Um, but th there's a lot of uh, 
I'd say that it seems that, that things are always getting better, at least from my perspective. Uh, our lives are always getting easier. Technology is always getting more advanced. Um, so the opinion you have that things are going negatively, um, I mean, I, I welcome you to counter, counter my position on the matter. I mean, I, 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 I thank you for coming out and maybe trying to express yourself. I don't know how well you're expressing it. I mean, I appreciate that you have a camera. I think it's good. I'd love to see more people having and using cameras in their everyday lives. Um, the video you're making will likely be very expressive. I'm looking forward to it. Um, I hope he posts it personally because uh, there have been times when I've had interactions with some protesters on the street with cameras where they haven't po just they just never posted the video, and I was always disappointed. Mm -hmm. If you have any trouble, like with YouTube or whatever, just knock on my door. I'll help and get the video up. All right. Well, this is rather dull. If you yep. need any of this stuff, just come knock on the door. I'm going to bring it. Yeah, inside. I'm getting back to work myself. I'll be chilling. If you get thirsty or anything, I got you covered. here, whatever it's being called these days. Um, I was hoping there'd be more people, you know, there'd be more flattering. Um, there was once before when a couple, a husband and wife, I believe, came and chalked alongside the house, and uh, we got some good video of that. It was on Cheshire TV, um, so it's shared with the community. Um, if you're not aware of it, I, I would strongly encourage you to not only put your stuff on the internet, but also to submit it to Cheshire TV, because they'll air anything. There's even things that might get taken off the internet, taken off YouTube and other video hosting platforms. Whereas Cheshire TV's policy, it's very pro-free speech, it's LA or anything. So I think that's a great way for people to express themselves to the whole community. Um, you know, the one activity you're engaging in here, the video you're going to make, um, maybe it'll reach X amount of people, but with just, uh, you know, a few placements, a few drops in the right spots, it could reach far more. it on the Stop Free King Facebook page of uh, going to Leverett Street and staging some sort of event. There was even discussion of chalking, and I was really looking forward to seeing some colorful art on the sidewalk. Assalamualaikum. Bring your friends next time. Is that his car down there? Excuse me. Huh? Stunning news today, Michael Jackson passed away at the age of 50 years old. Right behind me is the home that Michael Jackson grew up in, and we're just going to go around and get some sound bites of people's reactions to Michael's death. First they talking about he was in the hospital or something like that, and then next you know we found out that he was dead, you know. Sad thing, sad thing. They said he was in a coma at first, and then I really found out he was dead. I cried. 
I was at home and I couldn't believe it. I just broke down because I grew up on his music and it was a shock. And I was at home when I heard the news. My uh, daughter was there and her friend called and told us so we immediately turned on CNN. Yeah, it was devastating news with him passing, you know, and stuff. I didn't know he was that sick, you know. Man, I just dropped my cell phone. I was talking to my mother and I dropped my cell phone and I was like, I heard he was sick. But she was like, no, nah, he didn't, he's in a coma. I was like, no, nah. and then I found out he died. And it really hurt me because we grew up on Michael Jackson's music. It was one of the saddest things in my life. You know, he's an icon. And we, we uh, people gave are gonna miss him very much. Uh, I went to school with, with Tito, his, his brothers, you know, and Jermaine, you know. But he was born and raised here. You know, it's one hard thing we, we, we just have to live well, you know. So I'm a true Michael Jackson fan. Born, raised on Michael Jackson's music. That's all we knew as kids. I felt real sad because I liked him. Despite it, the bad things that they tried to say my, about Michael Jackson, I, I still liked him despite of whatever they said about him. Well, Michael's definitely a legend. His music speaks for himself. I mean, all of the, the major artists now, you see Usher, Neo, these artists are all following Michael. Michael was like their hero, and these are the, the new artists trying to kind of take over where Michael left off. So Michael is definitely a legend, and his music will live forever. Yo, did you grow up here in, uh, in, in this area? Yes, I did. In fact, my aunt still lives around the corner, and uh, I remember coming around the corner back when uh, Joe had them practicing in the backyard, and, and I would hear them uh, back in the day, and it was just, you know, to see them go to the fame and fortune that they, you know, ended up with, it was just a great thing. Some of the greatest pride that the city of Gary, you know, can, can ever hope to achieve, you know, to, to, to be the home of Michael Jackson. I remember being in the service, and anywhere I went, around halfway around the world uh, once I mentioned you know this is back in the 70s and I would mention that I was from Gary Indiana people would say oh uh, do you know Michael Jackson I mean, you know, <laughs> I don't know him personally but you know I, you know I, I, did, I did used to see him back you know right. but, but it, it, you mentioned Gary Indiana the, the first thing came out of their mouth was Michael Jackson I, I like kind of grew up with the, the whole family and uh, I remember uh, Michael I, he's maybe a couple years younger than I am I remember I was about 11 years old I say Michael was about nine. I used he's standing right there in front of the house with the rest of his brother. They had been to some kind of rehearsal or something. And he was talking to some older guys like you and myself, and then he he's telling them about a gig or something. I'm like I didn't even know what that was, and he was younger than me. Michael was way ahead of his time. It's just like some children, a child you see that they say has been here before. That's Michael. He's been here before, so this is uh, you know like a second coming or something. Michael. I mean, amazing, the whole entire family, but he just stood out more. I love him, whether, what anybody else feel out here, I do, out, you know, I, I got a deep compassion for Michael Jackson to the point where it brought me to tears. Here we have a picture of the entire Jackson 5 family, which Mike didn't attend. They came to a funeral here in Gary for their cousin, Johnny Jackson, and I came down here to greet the fellas. They introduced themselves to me with, I went to school with Michael Jackson here at Garnett School, 1968, 69, 70. Mike was a very good person, pop of the rock, cool man, everybody loves him. And if you didn't, it was something wrong with you. He was the king of pop. My heart goes out to the family. He did, he accomplished what many people had never ever dreamed of. God bless him, may his heart rest in peace. Were you born in the neighborhood? Yes, sir. Uh, I went to school with Mike, uh, J Jermaine, Tito, and Jackie. Okay, I, I remember they did talent shows here. Lucky's Lounge, down at the uh, Clemens Lounge, and, you know, did uh, Roosevelt School right here behind you. They did all, you know, talent shows all over the city, man. You know, they had a lot of talent in this city. And Michael Jackson and his brothers, man, was uh, icons, you know. And, you know, you can look at this house right here where they uh, played, play, you know, they played and practiced and everything right in that little house right there. You know, it was... Uh, it would just, you know, he could be missed. That's all I can say. He's going to be missed. Okay, as, as, as growing up as a teenager right here in Gary, Indiana, I would walk down this avenue here, and I would see a van parked uh, right here on the side of the house, and the Jackson Fives was in there just banging away. Now, matter of fact, my mom's and his mom's was in the hospital together, uh, delivering my younger sister, which uh, Michael was born in 1958, August the 29th. 
his mom's and my mom's was in the same room together as Michael was being de uh, being delivered. What did you learn from Michael Jackson? Well, I mean, as you can see, a humble beginning can't stop you from uh, from achieving anything. Teach me you can do anything, and he came from this little small house right here to greatness. They instill the gold into the young people, letting them know that you can do what your heart content is and that you can go further if you just put yourself into it. And they did it. They accomplished what a lot of kids can accomplish just if they think about what they're putting themselves through. You know, try to get yourself away. And they did it. I mean, the music is great. And my grandkids love it. I love it. I'm still playing it. He was the world's greatest entertainer, dancing and singing and everything. So I would like to... Um, uh, send this one out to Michael the song that he wrote like a comet blazing across the evening sky gone too soon like a rainbow fading in the twinkling of an eye gone too soon shiny and sparkling and spindly bright here one day go one night see the legacy he left with me is that anything is possible uh no matter where you're from no matter what you know where you started out you know it's possible you put forth the effort you can make it that's a legacy, you know, music industry is a legacy. This man and what he symbolizes, you know, he's a great American, he's a great entertainer, he's a great humanitarian. He was an icon of the, of the world, you know what I'm saying? He was nationwide, you know what I mean? He did his traveling, he did his concerts and his tours, but he never forgot about the kids. So my mom, uh, like I said, she grew up over here on Madison, and she went to school with Michael, Jermaine, and Janet. Uh, which is King, which was Garnett when they went to school, now it's King. So she told me all the stories, I used to watch him here perform in the living room and so we grew up, I grew up watching Michael Jackson, my kids, they love him so it's, you can see it's a legacy. Are you from the neighborhood? Yeah, uh -huh. I've been here for 47 years. So you got to know the Jackson family. Right. Uh-huh. Can you tell us anything about them growing up? I remember when they first started singing and how they were, they was good. I remember this house. He came from Gary, Indiana, and if you can come from Gary, Indiana and become who he was, number one, the king of pop, so can you, and you can achieve anything that you want to do. I'm into music, I do music, and just to put your heart and your soul in your music, that's all Michael did, you know? He put his heart and his soul in his music, and he made what he said. So through his trials and his tribulations, he was still Michael. Gary, Indiana, I respect him, you know. I'm a Bahamian, came from the Bahamas, I knew about Michael, came to Gary, and I loved it. We're going to lose, um, we have lost the icon because he was a fabulous person, even though he was younger than me, but I enjoyed his music. <laughs> and I know his family is going to miss him very much. Did you know Michael Jackson? Did you know his music? Yes. What do you know about Michael Jackson? That he was a good person. Did you like his music? Yes. What happened to Michael today? He died. And how did that make you feel? Sad. You know, Michael did a lot for kids. You know that. Yes. <clears throat> if there's anything you could tell Michael, what would you tell him now? We love you, Michael. Gone too soon. 